Hello, Active Faith Bible Church. Greetings from the Brodsky home. Wanted to share a scripture with you today. It's one of my favorites. It's one that has been many people's favorites for a long time. It's very encouraging. And we all kind of think, I think we need some encouragement right now. So I'm going to read to you from the 46th Psalm. It goes like this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when the morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariot with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. That to me is such a great hymn, a psalm. I, I really just have to read it to be encouraging with it, I think. But I just wanted to share a few thoughts. Some of my own thoughts, some I've borrowed from theologians like Spurgeon and others, but Essentially, this is divided into three main parts. And in the first part, it talks about the role of, of nature, I guess. And it starts off by saying that God is our refuge. And that's a good place to just stop right there because God is our refuge, not the United States of America, the military, the medical profession, our confidence is not in those things. Our confidence is, is in God. And other things will can and will fail, but God will never fail. And the fact that he is our refuge and strength brings us great comfort. And that's why the next line, when it says that he is a very present help in trouble, I think it's important that he emphasizes he's a very present help in trouble because he could have just said, a present help in trouble, but I think that we have a tendency to to doubt and to fear when things are bad, and people will say, where is God in the midst of my trial? Where is God when people are dying of COVID-19? Uh, we have to remember what the Word says and what God says, and He promises to be present with us in trouble. So if we're feeling that God is distant, we have to trust his word more than our feelings in, in those circumstances. And to me, it's very comforting just to remember that regardless of how I'm feeling, that God is always our refuge and strength and he's very present in trouble. And he talks about, even though the mountains might be moved into the heart of the sea, uh, mountains are pretty solid. You don't expect them to go anywhere. But if there was such a disaster where a mountain was uprooted and thrown into the sea, God would still be sovereign over that. And as fearful as that may sound, we can still have confidence in his loving sovereignty, even in that. And we don't have to be fearful, regardless of what natural disaster might take place. Uh, in the next section, it's talking more about what the nations might do. And it starts off by talking about a river. And it says there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God. And it kind of reminds me of Revelation 22, where it talks about a river of life in the celestial city. And a river, it's, it's a picture of life because it brings life-giving water. Now, if you were a besieged city, and you had an abundant supply of water, you would be in pretty good shape. I, and that's that's the picture here that, of, of God's provision, in spite of what might be happening outside, that everything that we need, God can provide 
So we can have confidence that God is, is sovereign even when nations come against us. So he says, the nations rage, the kingdoms totter. But he utters his voice and the earth melts. God is, doesn't matter what our opposition is, whether it's natural or whether it's other countries against us. God is our refuge and our strength. And that gives us courage and it should give us great joy. And you see it in, in this last section where it says, come behold the works of the Lord how he's brought desolations on the earth. He's talking about desolations to his enemies. So his enemies are not only Satan himself, but uh, nations that oppose God. And it says that he breaks the bow and shatters the spear. And there's this picture of looking over a battlefield and rejoicing in the deliverance of the Lord, the way that the Israelites might have rejoiced after the Red Sea drowned Pharaoh's army and you saw the bodies piled up on, on the shore. It's, it sounds gruesome, but really it's, it's supposed to bring joy because this great army that was against him was reduced to nothing, not by the, not, not by the power of the Israelites, but by God's own hand. And, and the same idea here, we can trust God regardless of whether it's natural disasters or, or some earthly um, man-made force that's coming up against us, we don't have to fear. And God will be glorified. He will be exalted. And he says it. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And he ends this by saying, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And he kind of bookends it because it started off saying that God is our refuge and strength. And it ends with saying that, that God is our fortress. And we can trust him regardless of the circumstances. I hope that blessed you the way it blessed me and I miss you all. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.